Welcome to the Baby Bunting Live series. This is season two, episode 43. Tonight we're talking about newborn babies and what they need and want and how they tell us through their behaviour. We've invited Belinda Joyce along to answer our questions as well as yours. Belinda is a midwife, maternal and child health nurse and author of Survive and Enjoy Your Baby. Thanks for joining us tonight, Belinda, on this new format. We're going to be covering all things newborn. So if you have any questions throughout the episode, be sure to pop them in the comments box and we'll answer these after the session ends. Belinda, you have joined us before on Baby Bunting Facebook Live, but for our newest and expectant parents, could you tell us a little more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on this evening. Um, look, I am a midwife and a maternal child health nurse, but at the end of the day, most importantly, I'm the mum of four beautiful children. And I still remember really vividly uh, becoming a first time mum and a mum to a newborn and how challenging that really was. And I guess now my passion really is in helping new parents navigate that so that they can find their own path to parenthood and so that they can enjoy their baby and their children more. That's fantastic, thank you. Um, tonight's episode, Linda, is all about the early days. What do newborn babies need the most? They need their parents. They need um, love, cuddles. They need lots and lots of sleep. They need nappy changes. Um, but most importantly, they just need you. Um, it's really important for that early bonding and attachment to form and um, it's something mummy just can't buy. So can you spoil a newborn baby? No, not at all. Um, so some people will tell you that you're spoiling your newborn baby, perhaps if you pick them up too often or respond to their cries. But in actual fact, you're just getting to know them. They're just getting to know life outside of the womb. And it's really important that you do respond to them, um, especially in those early days when you are just learning, um, because they don't have the ability to, um, I guess, wrap you around their little finger, even if it feels that way at times. They just don't have the cognition to be able to do that. They don't even know that you still exist when you're not in the room and they can't see you. So it's really important to, um, you know, if your newborn's crying and they're distressed, then really they're saying to you that they can't manage that themselves and that they need your help. And um, newborn babies can be ferocious feeders. Why do new newborns need so many feeds a day? They need, they, they have really tiny stomachs. Um, so they digest their food really quickly because it's milk uh, and then they need a refill. And in fact, they're, they're refilling all through the day in just small feeds um, all through the day and they're always um, pooping some of that out as well. So it's a continual 24-hour, um, um, I guess, transition. It's like a cycle. In yes. the first few days, there are many changes. So tell us about the first few poos. Is it normal for them to be black? Yes, the first few poos can be very black. Um, in fact, they should be um, quite black and tarry and sticky. Um, they're meconium. So it's what's in your baby's digestive tract when they're born. And it is important that that moves through quite quickly for your baby's health. Um, but it also lets you know that milk is starting to be digested and moving through and pushing, pushing that through and stimulating the bowel to actually move as it should. It's very messy. Um, and like I mentioned, sticky. So you could go through 10 or 20 wipes to get that off your baby's bottom. Um, and you might have quite a few poos that are like that. Don't worry, it's not going to continue. Um, it, it will move to generally that more mustardy yellow color once the milk's coming through. And interestingly, that meconium, it doesn't smell. So it looks awful and it looks like it should smell, but it doesn't have an odor. Ah, and green poo, is that normal? Yes. In fact, newborns can have all sorts of different colours in their poo. Um, so generally it will go to more of that mustardy yellow colour, but it could have green, be quite green or even a khaki colour, um, more brown, darker. I guess it's just really important if it's chalky looking or if it's got red flecks through it and looks like blood to always talk to your child health nurse, your GP, um, 
and your or your doctor and just get that checked out. What we've found is that a lot of parents now will take a photo of their baby's pooey nappy to show us when they come in for a consultation and it's really handy. Um, it sounds funny, but we look at a lot of photos of all sorts of things and um, photos of poo is one of them. And most times it's fine. That's great. And um, breastfed babies, I guess, uh, their, their poo's a little bit softer um, than if they're started on solids? Yeah, absolutely. So a breastfed baby's poos are um, much softer for longer. And once, um, if they move to formula or they're formula fed from birth, it's always thicker and a more formed stool. Um, and then when they start solids, it, um, regardless of the milk type, it is much thicker. Okay. Brenda, how much sleep do newborn babies actually need? Newborn babies need a lot more sleep than most people would expect so around sort of 13 to 17 or 18 hours a day is common um, like adults different babies require different amounts of sleep but most newborns will sleep on and off um, obviously they're going to be waking up for those feeds as well um, mm -hmm. but but many many hours okay and does the baby need to be bathed every day no no not at all um, newborn babies you know, they don't really sweat and they don't um, do anything that gets them that dirty, apart from in their nappy, of course, which we're cleaning their bottoms all day and night. Um, but you can do something like a top and tail, which is where you might get a nice warm face washer and just wash their face gently and their hands. Um, and then you know that they've had a little bit of a clean up and that's enough. Um, so every two or three days, it's probably a good idea to have a bath. Um, and really plunge them in the water and get them nice and clean. Um, and some families really like to incorporate a bath as part of their um, settling down routine in the evening. And if you're going to do that because it really settles the baby and they go off to have a better sleep, um, then that's fine too. Okay. And why do newborn babies cry so much? Look, <sighs> We know that it's normal that all newborn, well, most newborn babies will cry um, for some hours a day as they get older, and it usually peaks around the six week mark. Um, we know that that's normal, so they cry a little bit more every day. It peaks around six weeks, and then it really trails off around the eight week mark. We don't really know why though, so it's reassuring to know that it's normal. It appears to be tummy pain, and we think that it might have something to do with um, maturing of their gut but we we don't really know um, which is always a little bit worrying at the time for new parents of course and those newborns who don't cry very much should be parents should parents be concerned with that no not at all so there are some babies that are more the sleepy newborn and they don't seem to cry anywhere near as much they tend to wake up feed and then go back off to sleep and sometimes their parents worry because everyone else is talking about their newborns that are crying yeah. for long periods and theirs aren't and that's absolutely fine as long as they're waking up and they're feeding and you know have a little bit of awake time here and there um, then that's fine I guess it just highlights that all babies have different personalities and some yes. are just that less demanding. So what if a newborn baby is crying for many hours a day? Look, to a, to a point it's normal. If you're really concerned though that your baby's sick or that they're in a lot of pain, it's always important to see a doctor. So go and see your GP or if you're seeing a paediatrician, make an, another appointment with them. Or um, if it's the middle of the night and you're really concerned, heading into the emergency department might be the best option just to rule out anything medical that could be happening. In most cases, though, it is just a normal developmental curve that we see all babies go through and they do need to sort of move past that, um, which is quite challenging for parents. It is. And will parents actually know their baby's cries and what it means? Look, a lot of people will tell you with a new baby that you'll get to know their cries and that it's um, it's really important because you'll know the difference between their, their tired cry and their um, hungry cry. And for many parents, they hit around that six to eight week mark and they're thinking, I must be a terrible parent because I don't know what these cries mean. They all sound distressed. And that is actually true. Most newborn 
babies' cries do just sound distressed most of the time. Um, and when you do figure out what they're crying for, often it's more so around timing. So you think, oh, they're probably hungry because it's been a little while since they're fed. Um, but really, we, we often don't know. Um, so by around eight weeks, though, they are starting to do less of that just distressed crying for many hours. And it they, they tend to cry and you do start to hear a difference in their cries. And you can then start to to learn what they're crying for. You will never always know what they're crying for or, or yeah. what's wrong. Um, and that's okay, it doesn't make you a bad parent at all. It's really normal. Um, but at least most of the time you will know and it makes parenting much more fun. No, of course. And so what are the most common reasons that newborn baby cries? Look, I think a lot of the time newborns are just wanting to be held and wanting that contact with their parents. Um, they've been inside their mum's tummy for all of those months and then they come out and we put clothes on them and they start getting cold and, you know, life is so different. They've never had a, an empty stomach before that. So they start getting a, an empty stomach and that's an unusual feeling. They don't, they don't like it and they cry. Um, sometimes they're too hot, they're too cold. Sometimes I think they've just got a pain in their belly when they're learning to digest milk. Um, it, it can be really tricky to know. And it can be troubling for new parents when their baby seems so distressed. So what are some settling strategies we could use? Yes, yeah, so there's lots of different strategies you can try. And I often suggest to parents to write a list of them and stick them on the fridge. And then when, um, when their baby is distressed, they can run through that list and try some different strategies because at the time, sometimes it can be really hard to think of them. Um, but obviously picking your baby up, walking with them, patting them on the back. So if you, um, um, you might pop them up on your shoulder and just do some gentle patting on the back, um, which is burping them as well. Um, rocking them, singing to them. Um, really, yeah. you can just pop them in the pram, take them for a walk. Um, going outside actually is a really great strategy because even though your baby might still be crying, it's nowhere near as loud. Um, and there's the other sounds and the movement of the pram will often help your baby to, um, to settle and maybe go off to sleep as well, which can be very helpful. Well, of course, Belinda, there's some lovely strategies that, um, that parents can use. But equally, what can parents do if they start to feel frustrated with their baby being distressed? Yeah, so it, as I've discussed, it's normal for babies to cry a little bit more every day and that peaks around six weeks. Often parents' frustration does the same thing, it mirrors that. So it's normal to get frustrated when you can't help your baby and they're crying and there's nothing you can do that's, um, that is a solution to that. Um, so the most important thing there is just to keep your baby really safe. You can't shake your baby. It's very dangerous for your baby to do that. Pop them in the cot or the bassinet and walk away. Um, take a step outside and just take three really big deep breaths. Um, yeah. That physiologically makes you um, calm or calmer at least. You, you can't help it. And then when you go back into your baby, you'll be better at, um, I guess, being able to start again with some settling strategies. Um, and, and sometimes you really do just need to phone a friend and ask for some help um, because there are lots of people often out there who are, are happy to help, but you do need to let them know you need it. Thanks, Belinda. I think, yeah, certainly phoning a friend is a, is a good option and, um, yeah, and parents should never be felt, feel alone. So just to ensure Bubs is comfortable, how many layers of clothing should a newborn baby be wearing? Look, we often just suggest whatever you're wearing, so the amount of layers you're wearing plus a singlet often works well for a newborn baby. Um, remembering though, that if you live in a really hot climate, you might only put a, a singlet and a nappy on your baby or even just the nappy if it's extremely hot and that's fine as well. So there's lots of different, um, different climates. That's true. And do they need to wear a hat? No, look, in the, in the first couple of days of life, we'll usually put a little beanie on newborn baby's head and that helps them to um, regulate their own temperature and, and not get too cold. Uh, but from then on, babies when they're inside or even in the car really don't need to have a hat on. And I think um, so many people see babies 
always wearing hats and it tends to be on TV and in the movies that young babies always seem to have a hat on and it's, it's not very safe because we want babies to be able to get rid of any excess temperature. If they're too hot, they'll actually cool down by um, moving that temperature out, the, out of their head, um, which is pretty clever. And it's a SIDS risk as well. So we would never want a baby to go to bed with a hat on or have that, um, I guess, not, no ability to reduce their temperature. Okay. Um, Belinda, I've got a few questions about newborns and their senses. Can newborn babies see from birth? They can, yeah, around 20 to 40 centimetres in distance, which is generally if you're cradling a baby in your arms, just where their head is and their face, where they'd be looking at your face. So it's perfect. And if they were on, say, on the change table or something like that, you can just bring your face in a little bit closer for them. Um, they will really enjoy that. And what do newborns like to look at? Oh, the thing that they enjoy the most, obviously, is your face. So um, yeah. they really love human faces, but their own parents' faces even more. And if the face is smiling, it's even better. So um, you are your baby's first toy. Okay. And um, what can a newborn baby hear? They can hear really quite well. And they've been listening to your voices even while they're um, in your tummy. So they know mum's voice really well and often their um, dad's voice as well. And in a, in a crowded room, they will even look towards their parents' voice over a stranger's voice, which is pretty clever. It certainly is. Um, and what do they like to listen to? They love listening to their parents' voices. They love listening to... Um, you know, if you were singing, um, telling them little stories, because that's early communication, it's really important. Um, even anything that rhymes or anything that's quite animated, um, something that we all tend to do when we talk to a newborn baby is actually um, talk in a higher voice. And it, it's really interesting that, you know, even big men will come and talk to a little baby and talk in this higher voice as well. And that's what babies respond to. And somehow we just know that whether it's cultural or not, I'm not sure how we know, but we know and babies respond to it beautifully. It is instinctive, isn't it? Mm. Um, what about their sense of touch? Babies love to be touched. So um, the sense of touch, I think for humans is really important, but for babies, They've been with their mum all of that time. They really love to be close to, to um, people and to their parents, um, but they really love that being touched on their skin. Um, so having showers with them, um, spending time um, skin to skin, even if you're not breastfeeding. So um, lots of dads enjoy doing skin to skin with their babies. Um, but just having that time, so you can use little pouches. Some of them, the baby carriers are, allow the baby to be skin to skin rather than having fabric between. Um, mm -hmm. And something that we've learnt, and the, the research backs this up too, is that uh, premature babies who are in the NICU or the special care nursery actually grow faster, put on more weight and um, settle better if they're having regular skin to skin contact with their parents. So we actually call it kangaroo care and it's very cute, um, but they actually have that time and it's that touch and love and attachment and bonding all in one. Oh, lovely. And are newborns too young to massage? No, not at all. So long as it's gentle and the baby and the parents happy doing it, it they're never too young to massage. Um, maybe just for really short periods of time while they're really little. Um, and you can introduce some massage oil. So just make sure it's suitable for a baby and test on a small part of their skin, maybe the day before, um, and just check they don't have any reaction because um, what we find is that massage oil really enhances those feelings of pleasure from massage. And you probably know mm -hmm. that yourself. Um, this, the hands glide so much better over the skin. Um, and it can be really beautiful. So Belinda, do you have any final tips for our viewers tonight? I think just remembering that 
your baby will grow up so, so quickly. And I know so many people will tell you this, but it's actually true. Um, enjoy them while they're really little. They are a lot of work, but it's such a special time and you just will never get that back. Um, and I think also just remembering that um, you are your, your baby's favorite toy. You're, you um, cuddling them, talking to them, telling them about, about the world, um, and loving them is the most important thing and um, they will actually develop and have this very secure attachment with you if you spend that time with them while they're little. Oh, Belinda, that's so true. So tonight that concludes our session. So Belinda, thank you again for sharing your knowledge of newborns and what parents can expect. I'm sure it's given both our new and expectant parents some tips to watch out for and hopefully the reassurance they require. Thank you everyone for watching and we hope to see you next time. You can see more of Belinda and her book on her, on her website and we will link that into the post. And of course, if you have any concern about your baby's health or specific questions about any of the topics Belinda has covered tonight, please see your maternal and child health nurse, a doctor or, a, or an appropriate health professional. So that's good night to all. Thanks for joining us tonight.